Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, we're privileged to sit down and talk to Glenn Edmonds of Glenn Edmonds Advanced Driving. Welcome to our show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's really an honor to sit here with you, <laughs> with your history. The honor is mine. Thank you. <laughs> with your history of mm -hmm. rallying and, you know, and the difference that you're making um, in security because that's what you believe in. Glenn, tell us what it's inspired the Advanced Driving School. What inspired us to get uh, to start was that um, we were victims, my wife and I were victims of an attempted carjacking. And the carjacking went ter terribly wrong, shots were fired, and it was all going completely uh, pear-shaped, for the want of a better word. Um, except that there was a, an instance where I was able to escape. And the reason I was able to escape was because I was able to drive. Yeah. And I really thought that we needed to make a difference. I have this history in motorsport. Yeah. And we thought, how could we, how could we make a difference? How, as a, I mean, this country has given me everything. And so I went, to, I went overseas, got some training, and I brought it back. And initially we said we would do one course a month. Well, one course led to two, led to three. Uh, we realized that in the course of security training that we needed to make a difference with driver training in general. So then we started defensive driver training and then we went on and started other courses. And the company just grew and grew and grew. Um, when you talk about advanced driving, what does that mean? Advanced driving is where you take a driver that has existing experience and you make him a better driver. The advanced driving is showing him things that, that he needs to know to ensure that when he's driving on the roads that he is safe and that the people that he has in his car with him are also safe. And these are some of the things that you teach at the advanced uh, driving school. That's correct. And what else do you teach people, teach drivers? Well, we, can, uh, we teach drivers, for example, how to maneuver the vehicle should somebody suddenly stop in front of you? How we go back to the Mombasa Road? All of a sudden, the car in front of you breaks to avoid the, the child running across the road, and you are too close. What do you do? You need to change lanes, for example. And again, most people, the first thing they do is go to the brake and ask the car to steer, and the car says, what do you want me to do? Well, all they have to do is release the accelerator, steer the car, and then stop the car. Mm -hmm. It sounds very simple. But when you put people in that situation that don't have a good foundation of driving, they go back to whoever taught them first. And invariably, that, that person will say, keep the brakes locked. Why is this so important to you, that we know how to drive and, and, and advanced driving? It's important to me because um, Kenyan roads are getting exceedingly dangerous. And we know that the official figure is 3,000 people lose their lives a year. It's actually much more than that. And the problem is, is that we are losing our brightest minds to road deaths. Lawyers, nurses, doctors, uh, accountants, the, the backbone of Kenyan society, that middle class that keeps this country uh, going forward when, they, when people first reach that uh, middle income bracket, mm -hmm. the first thing they wind up doing is buying a car. Now, those people are the ones for, that make a difference in Kenya. When a, a trainer is, is sitting with a driver, he is constantly evaluating that driver. So our training starts off, he may start off at 30 kilometers an hour. Then we'll move, move him to 33. Then we'll move him to 35. Same exercise. Eventually, we will get him to a point where he is able to, do, to use the vehicle to 80%. Eventually, he will finish being able to do that same exercise at 55 kilometers an hour. Glenn, we must take a break, but we'd like to know about the people that you work with and the people that you have trained because you cannot do this alone. No. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Do not go away.
Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, we are privileged to speak to Glenn Edmonds of Glenn Edmonds Advanced Training School. Why do you call it after your name? Um, we called it after our name because um, we, I made my name through motorsport. And we thought that if we wanted to progress, we should really um, put my name on it. So as that way people would know, we'd like to think that uh, people think that my name carries some weight from the motorsport times. Mm -hmm. like it that. does, of course, it does. Look at all the trophies that you have here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, an awful lot of money and an awful lot of hard work. But, yeah. you know, it's not about the trophies really at the end yeah. of the day. It's about trying to make a difference. Yeah, and what you're doing right now. I asked you about the people that you work with. Obviously, mm -hmm. you train them. You cannot do this alone. No. Yeah. Tell us about the people that you work with, your trainers. As the company grew, we got to the point where I couldn't do all the training myself. I couldn't do the day-to-day -day management of the company. Um, my wife, who's also in the company, she does all the marketing. And we became a victim of our own success, really. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, because really, at the end of the day, as the company grew, I just, there was just, time is finite, as you know. and so. To make a difference, um, as we became more and more popular, we needed to, to bring in some trainers. So um, we are very proud, I particularly am very proud of my trainers, and they're, they're Kenyan trainers. They have uh, their advanced driving instructors, UK standards. They are exceedingly competent. And at the end of the day, if we don't invest in our Kenyans, we're not going to go anywhere. We have to keep investing in Kenya. I am not going to be sitting in this seat for my whole life. I want one of my trainers to progress to sitting in this seat. Because ultimately, as a Kenyan, there is nothing that makes me feel better than seeing a Kenyan moving forward in his life. So you're very mobile. Like if I'm in Kisumu and I'm listening to this and watching this and say, I want your people to come to me, you do, you do that. Yes. We, uh, we, we send our trainers out. We have a mobile training unit which has all the kit and they go out and take the kit there and they train there. All you have to su supply us with is an area that's big enough that we can move a car and maneuver a car in mm -hmm. and then we can work from there. Glenn, uh, when you talk about training, um, your, the advanced training school, it's not, is it specifically for people who are implied as drivers or is it for... It's for, it for? it's for everybody. Really, at the end of the day, uh, we, uh, we train across the scope. The problem is this, is that some companies believe that driver training is a luxury. And they want the driver training to go ahead. They want the driver to have, have better training. But they look for the cheaper option mm. for some reason. So what would you say has been your greatest achievement? <laughs> ah, my greatest achievement has to be, apart from my family, which is the first, but my greatest achievement has to be the fact that I have trainers that I believe in. I have Kenyan trainers that have a work ethic and have integrity and that want to make a difference. Having been in business for the last 11 years, how many would you be able to put a number of the number of people that you have trained? Yes, over 13,000 people. 13,000 people. Yeah. 13,000 lives. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, we would like to think if we even saved one of those people from uh, injury or death, then our job is done, is it not? Yeah. And what, is, what, what would you say are the lessons you have learned? Uh, tenacity. Um, doing business in Kenya is not easy. Um, what, what challenges do you face? Right? What challenges do we face? When you say it's not easy. Yeah. The economy is difficult. I mean, I mean there are times when everybody has to make sacrifices. Um, there are times when we look at each other and go, how are we going to get through this month? And then all of a sudden, with God's help, we're busy again. Glenn, having been in business for the last 11 years, what would you do differently? 
Well, my first thing would be is I would think to myself, you've got to remember one thing. I didn't come from every single shilling that we've ever made in this company has gone back into the company. We we don't take a lot of money out because we're trying to grow the company. What would I do differently? To be honest, I don't think I'd do any anything differently. I think that uh, I couldn't have afforded more trainers when I first started. I mean, for the first eight years of this company's life, I was on the tarmac. I, and I still go on the tarmac. On Friday, I will be out there um, working with a client one-on-one -on -one that's that wants me and nobody else. So I will be out on the tarmac, you know. Um, but ultimately, I think that if, if I could go back, I would probably um, try and get our Kenyan trainers up to speed earlier. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't have the money then to employ them. I had to do it myself. Yeah. And um, do you do? I know you train within these mm -hmm. facilities. Do you ever go on the main roads, like for example, on Mombasa Road? We have so a. So that you can see where our minds are with yeah. your training. We us. have a. We have one course that's called uh, the the city course, and where we take uh, um, drivers out to, and we teach them about the highway system, uh, the the lanes and things like that, the the roundabouts, things like that. So yes, we do have a city course, which is a one day course, um, but most of ninety percent of the time we it's done, we're it's done here, facility. done within the facility. Yeah. Glenn, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for your time and for taking the mandate, really, for saving lives, you know, and, and creating that awareness that we are all responsible well, yeah. when we are on these roads. And then there is an opportunity to learn how to be better drivers from you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you coming. As I say, we, uh, for us, it is about making a difference on Kenyan roads. Um, we cannot keep losing the amount of um, drivers that we are, are doing. Somebody has to take an initiative. We've been working at this 11 years and hopefully we'll be here for another 22 years or whatever. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business, where our goal is to see you succeed. This week, our expert is Eric Omanga of Business Clinic, Karibu Sana, who's okay. here to discuss leadership succession strategies. Succession is part of a strategy that we should put in place um, when we start our businesses, but it's not something that we of often think about. Perhaps you can guide us or tell us why it is important to put that kind of strategy in our business plan. Um, a lot of us entrepreneurs start businesses without an exit plan in place. Once the realization that at some point uh, you would want to exit your business comes to be, then uh, the challenge and the question of how will you exit yourself Using the works of Charan, uh, the people who have uh, articulated what we call the leadership pipeline, uh, as an entrepreneur, we should realize the various levels of leadership that we need to build into our businesses. Before we exit? Yes. Okay. Um, Eric, the guest we had earlier on, Glenn Edmond, he's very passionate about uh, succession in the sense that not, not for his family, but for the members of his staff. Um, in your opinion, what kind of um, processes should we put in place if we want to have a successful exit plan? Um, I would advise Glenn to, to have a very strong uh, systematic approach to how he will grow the people in his team and uh, one key area is to for him to establish what levels his organizational structure uh, 
places leadership at. So at each level, is it entry level uh, as a trainer? Uh, is it supervisory level in terms of training the trainers or making sure that the trainers are observing the, the rules and, 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 and the principles of the, uh, the, the, his organization. Uh, and this he could achieve by having a robust uh, mentoring program where at least for those who are at a lower level, they have an opportunity to shadow uh, their seniors and see and experience what exactly they do. Uh, it is important to have a strong mentoring program within the organization across the horizontal levels and vertical levels so that if you are in a, a department that is concerned with safety, for instance, then you should also get an opportunity to experience another department that is not your core. But in so doing, then you learn what those people do. Ultimately, what that does is that it takes an employee through the entire organization, and from there, they would appreciate what talents, what skills and competencies they need to build for them to play at what role. And it will help Glenn make it a bit easier to convince uh, his team and team members to take up bigger and bigger responsibilities. So I, I, I essentially there should be no vacuum. What, what we see uh, around is that there is a lot of competition in poaching. Business people are more inclined to buying talent as opposed to building talent. And when you do that, it is not only costly, but there is bound to be cultural conflict by you getting a leader from outside uh, coming to work in a space that thinks and behaves in a certain way that they are not familiar with. Why is it important um, for the entrepreneur to understand the exit strategy? Yeah, because sometimes as entrepreneurs, we want to hold on to this empire of ours until we die. But the, there must come a, a season yeah, where I must leave, isn't it? That is true. Successful businesses were started by people who had a vision and a dream. They either wanted to right a terrible wrong, they wanted to make sure that the end or the demise of a good thing doesn't happen. And that being the case, I don't think any entrepreneur who will lack energy to continue performing would live a good life seeing the deterioration of their, uh, of all the work they have done. Mm -hmm. So that is why uh, as a business advisor, we, 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 we advise people to always think about what would happen in the event that uh, a time has reached and I have to exit this organization. And we start thinking from that perspective then it would force us to think about the solutions that we need to place uh, in the organization so that that organization and your vision is carried on for many, many years and centuries. In, in our society today, we are pushing young people to get into business, to be entrepreneurs, to be self-employed, um, so that we can close the gap of joblessness. What advice would you give them at this stage of their life about exit uh, strategies in their businesses? Because a lot of us are starting businesses. Whenever you think of getting into a business, and especially a business that will require you to raise uh, huge sums of capital, you will have the best plan of doing that if only you have thought about how you will exit. Because Exiting from a business does not necessarily mean that 
you, you have to totally sell and relinquish your business. It could just also mean that you have a dream of listing your, your business in the public, uh, uh, maybe stock exchange. Thank you so much, Eric, on your advice on succession and leadership and what we need to put in place and what we need to consider, really, because we cannot hold on to these positions uh, for the rest of our lives. Thank you so much for your advice. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Remember, leadership and learning are indispensable to one another. Do have a blessed week.